gentlemen and gentlewomen. As you know, the alliance between Valor and Mystic has been shattered. This has been our moment, this has been the time that we've been waiting to strike. Our time is now night. A Charizard gym has been located by East Hamburg. We will be going with a full frontal assault option. We need all the members of our army to be complete and attacked as much as possible. JJ, what will you be bringing? Sir! A weeping bell. JJ, a weeping bell as a grass type is weak both against fire and flying. I'm, I need you to sit down. Victor, what will you be bringing? The trio. Victor, a Doug Trio as a ground type is also weak against flying. Sit down. Odin, can you please represent some sense of this group? Odin, what will you be bringing to the full frontal assault of a Charizard? Uh, Bell Sprout! Okay, first off, we do not need guns for this. And second, Bell Sprout's even dumber than Weeping Bell. Sit down. We need to have a serious talk about strategy. That was just painful. I'm not uh, saying that you should memorize the full extensive list of every Pokemon type matchup in the game. That would help, but it really sucks to have to look up on the fly while you're outside trying to take over a gym. Ah shucks, there's a big old Clefable or something here. What can I use that would be an ideal matchup? It also sucks if you know what you're doing and you're playing with somebody else who needs to consult with you every time. It can become a small bit of a distraction. So the bottom line is it really, really helps to have a couple rules of thumb just to know what's going to counter some of the most basic and ubiquitous Pokemon that are out there right now. So the best bottom line, the best rule of thumb that you can have is if the type of your Pokemon would grow in nature in the type of the Pokemon that you're fighting, you're going to have a type advantage. If in nature, let's say that you are an ice cube, you would not succeed very well in a well of fire. Therefore, fire being a thing that melts ice is going to be super effective against an ice type of Pokemon. That's the most simple, basic way to lay it down right now. While the game does this for you automatically when you're jumping into a gym, it's much better to know if you can choose something better. It doesn't always choose your optimal. Pokemon for a matchup. It does a good job on its own though, which is kind of nice. When you are taking a gym, or when you're doing your matchup, your job is to figure out which Pokemon is going to be most efficient, or what's going to be the easiest to beat whatever in the gym is for the amount of prestige that you want. So let's get into it. I'm going to try and give a mnemonic for each Pokemon type. We're going to start with grass. Grass is very effective against water, because grass needs water to live. You could also have water-based plants. That does make a lot of sense. Also, ground. Grass can break up rocks. I don't know if you guys know, if you go hiking a lot, you'll see trees, trees and roots are destroying all the rocks all around. It breaks them into little tinier bits. Let's go into fire. Fire will burn grass and fire melts ice. If you have a termite infestation, you set your house on fire, guess what? No more termite infestation. Fire beats bugs. Bugs don't respond to heat very well. And also steel. Fire melts steel. I'm a big fan of Terminator 2. From fire, let's go into water. Water can wear down rocks in nature, so water beats rock. Water can turn ground into mud or however you want to rationalize it, but water also beats ground. Water is also very effective, obviously, against fire. It's going to put out your fire. We didn't start that fire. Whatever. And on that note, let's just go directly from water into electricity. Electricity is interesting in that it's the only type in the game that's only weak against one type, and it's weak against ground. That makes sense, you know, if you're being struck by a lightning bolt, it helps if you ground yourself, you got your rubber soles. Sure. However, electricity is good against water and flying, because I guess if you're flying around in the storm, the last thing you want is to get hit by a lightning bolt. Next, you have your normal type of Pokemon. Normal's just normal. Normal does 100% damage to everything except fighting. Just think of fighting as your counter to normal stuff. Someone who's training as a fighter, they're training how to beat up your everyday Joe. Now, ground is an interesting type because I think it's an effective counter to five different types, which a lot of people underestimate. Steel and rock. These are things found in the earth, so they're going to not be effective against ground. The ground is going to be super effective against them. Let's just say that that makes sense. Ground is also a great way to put out fire. You got a campfire going crazy? Throw some dirt on it. Very effective. Ground is good against electricity. And the last note on ground is that it's effective against poison. I'm not exactly sure why, but I do know you can't poison the ground. It's always going to be there. You might have a poisonous, nasty ground, but we just call that New Jersey. 
ice type. Ice is very good. My favorite way to counter dragons happens to be with ice because blizzard is a really powerful move in this game. So ice will counter dragons. I'm not sure why. Let's say it's because of the lore or something. I've I play D&D campaigns where ice dragons exist, so I don't really get that one. Ice is also, when it's winter time, what does the ground get covered by? Snow. Snow dominates the ground to human perception, so let's just say, okay, ice beats ground. Ice is also going to be very effective against grass, as we covered, and flying, because birds fly south for the winter time? Sure, okay. After ground, you have your rock type, and let's think about one of the first things you do when you set up a campfire, you layer it with rocks around, because rocks are very effective at containing fire. Rock is very effective against ice, if you got some icicles outside that are trying to take over your house, try throwing some rocks at them, I guess the rock is going to win that fight. Flying, you ever hear the phrase, two birds, one stone? It's because rocks are good against birds, if you know how to use them right. This game's getting really dark, now that I'm thinking about it, but okay. Also, bugs. Rock is apparently very powerful against bug type. I'm gonna have to refer to a Tyrion Lannister. Smuff the beetle. Smuff him. Next up, you got your fighting types, and fighting types, think of them as your MMA fighters of Pokemon Go. So, you know, fighting guys, they like to beat up steel beams to show off their strength. They like to karate chop bricks, so fighting is going to be very effective against rocks. Also, so think about your MMA guy as someone who's learned to specifically counter uh, normal types. And, uh, the last but not least is going to be ice, and I don't know, Rocky Balboa, you got something to say about uh, why fighting would beat ice? Poison type, and I don't know why poison doesn't work very well against bugs. It should. Pesticide, it by nature is poison. Poison does work very well against grass types. Poison also works very well against fairies. I don't know, I'm pretty sure there's a bad roofie joke against Tinkerbell in there somewhere, but let it be known that uh, if you got a Clefable who's in a gym who's giving you some trouble, just poison its butt. You'll take it down. Now we're on to the Psychic type, and uh, you know how the jock in your class might beat up the normal kids in school or something, but that Psychic kid in your class who has telekinesis constantly throws them into the lockers? Yeah. Psychic beats fighting very well. Psychic is also very effective against poison, and while intuitively that might not make a lot of sense to people, every single anime I've seen where a character gets poisoned, they can kind of willpower their way out of it. So, sure, let's say that Japan believes in mind over body or whatever, Psychic beats poison. Next up, you got your bug Pokemon. Bug Pokemon are very good against grass, because that's where they live. Bug Pokemon are very good against Psychic and Dark. And the only way that it makes sense that a Psychic is weak to bugs are because it's a creepy crawly. And when you're Psychic, you need to focus your attention, so you don't want to be covered in cockroaches or anything. Next to the Flying types, and Flying is very good against grass, because it rises above, and it kind of rules the skies over the grass. Sure, let's just say that Flying is good against grass. Flying's also very good against fighting because you create an uh, upper ground advantage. Basically, uh, if you got a bunch of kung fu artists, you got a bunch of B-52s dropping bombs on your head, who are you rooting for? And lastly, flying is good against bugs because almost everything in nature that eats a bug... No, that doesn't work. A lot of things in nature eat bugs, but birds eat bugs, so flying's good against bug. Next up, we got the dragon types. And again, Dragonite's really the only type that you want to counter here, but this is good to counter. Dragonite's really easy to wipe out, it has low HP pool, so if you have something that'll uh, overcome its defenses, such as an ice type or a fairy type, because both of those are strong against dragons, you're good. So, long story short, Tinkerbell will beat a dragon's butt, and that fire-breathing dragon hates the winter time, that's why he's hiding out in a cave all the time. Ice and fairies beat dragons. On the note of dragons, do you know what dragons are super effective against? Besides everything, because they have a decent attack value in this game. They're effective against dragons, but a dragon versus another dragon means everyone's taking a lot of damage. Next up you have the fairy type. Fairies are very powerful against dragon types. Fairies are very powerful against fighting types. I like to think that Tinkerbell beat up Captain Hook. Sure, Peter Pan's got... Ghost types. Ghost is very effective against Psychic, and Ghost is very effective against Ghost. Similar to the dragon matchup, speaking of darkness, darkness counters Ghost? Sure! 
Dark Juice counters Ghost. This one makes no sense to me. You would think that Ghost should hide out in the dark, but whatever. And Dark Juice also counters Psychic, and that's damn it. Well, that's the deal. There being 18 Pokemon types means there's a lot of permutations and possible matchups that you can make. I'm not going to make this video any longer. You should just have some helpful mnemonics so you can quickly on the fly figure out what's going to be useful against the gym Pokemon that you're up against. So if there's a grass type, remember, set that thing on fire. If there's a big Vaporeon in the gym, pull out your grass type. If there's a Dragonite, have a laugh. Pull out a Dugon, a Cloister, anything with a blizzard move. You're going to do significant damage, I promise you. You got a fire type, put that crap out with the Vaporeon. It gets trickier when you have a dual Pokemon type in the gym. For example, one of my favorite examples is Lapras being a water and an ice type. It can neutralize a lot. Another great example is Gyarados. Gyarados is a flying and a water type. And so we just discussed that grass is useful against water, but grass is not useful against flying. So those dual types will balance out the super effectiveness of your grass type. And you know that electric also counters water and has no effect against grass. It's also useful against flying types as well. You do a boatload of damage against a Gyarados with a solid Jolteon or something like that. So that's the bottom line for the matchup. Before you go out with your friends, just make sure you know what you're doing. That way you can be an asset and not a lie back on the droop because this is war, baby. War!